Welcome to Anatomy Lecture 1.2. In this lecture, we're going to learn about anatomical terminology and directional terminology. To start off, we're going to look at the surfaces of the body or near the body surfaces. And one thing you need to understand is anatomical position. Anatomical position, if you stand with your hands at your sides, but the palms need to be out. Supine, you're lying down, prone. Supine, you're laying down face up. Prone is if you were laying down, face down. So something that I want you to do is I want you to pull out that first packet that we got in your vocab so you can be looking at these. And this is a time you might want to stop the video. I'm not going to go over each of these, but these are ones you need to know. And there are some that you'll totally know, like you'll probably know oral is the mouth. And you probably will know abdominal is the abdominal region. Umbilical is like the belly button, all right? The navel, you'll probably know those. But other things like buccal for cheek and mental for chin, those are going to be new. So this is your anterior portion and this is the upper body, the anterior view. So work on them like in these sections, you know, so in a second, the next slide is going to be the anterior view, but it's going to be the lower region of the body. Let's take a look. So again, let's think of things that are easy, like pelvic, which would be your pelvis, or uh, you might be familiar with the femur, the largest, longest bone, longest bone in the body, so that's the femoral region of the thigh, or maybe the patella region, which is your kneecap. But you might not have heard about the pollux, which is your thumb, and you the hallux, which is the great toe, or manus, which, or manual, which is the hand. So take time to work on these in regions. And then we're gonna take a look at the posterior view next. Posterior view, uh, the shoulder, acromial, all right, is right there. Dorsal is the backside. That's something that will come up all the time. Cephalic is the head. Cervical, you might get that. If you're familiar with cervical vertebrae, that's going to be the vertebrae that are right in your neck. So this is a posterior view of the upper body. Here's a posterior view of the lower body. So let's see. Probably gluteal will be familiar to you, the buttocks, and maybe, I'm not sure, these might, a oh, lumbar, lumbar is a lower back, so that might be, a lot of these are going to be new. Calcaneal, uh, your, your Achilles tendon is the same thing as the calcaneal tendon, so that might be helpful to you if you've heard of that, but spend some time and even if you want to pause the video and work on this and then go on, that's going to be good use of your time. Anatomical terminology. Anatomical terminology, this is um, not too bad. We're going to, you know, divide the regions in and like play tic-tac-toe. So there are abdominal pelvic quadrants and abdominal pelvic regions. And we're all. I'm also going to go over anatomical directions that are going to reference terms based on the subject and what body part we're talking about. So these quadrants, you can see that, you know, quad means four. So there's just going to be four here. So the, remember when you're looking at your piece of paper or you're looking at a specimen or you know, a person, specimen could be any kind of animal. So if you're looking at your partner, like if we were in class or on the piece of paper when we're identifying anatomy, it's opposite of what it is to you. So you'd almost have to like turn around and make yourself exactly like what you're looking at. All right. Or if you can, you know, get in your mind, oh, I'm, it's my right side, it's their left side. So here, this is the right upper quadrant. This is the right lower quadrant. This is the left upper quadrant. And this is the left lower quadrant. All of these things that we're going to go over 
are important because it helps doctors identify where things are located. If they're palpating, you know, like when you go to the doctor, often they push on your stomach and they palpate and that's so they can feel if everything is normal or not. Here's where it's talking about tic-tac-toe. All right, so there's these, you know, you visually make a tic-tac-toe chart in, to identify the abdominal pelvic regions. So here and here, actually, I like to go from the middle, the middle. So this to me is really easy where my navel is, my umbilical, think of the umbilical cord attaches to the belly button. All right, the umbilical cord. So the umbilical region is going to be your belly button region. All right, your belly button, the term for that is a navel. Okay, so you know where that is. And then if I go up or below, I have these two words, up, epigastric, and hypogastric, okay, which is the pubic region. And like the hypogastric, you know where the pubic bone is. So this is usually pretty familiar, but hypo means under. And epi means upon. And so like gastric is referring to the stomach. So this is gonna be above the stomach, below the stomach. All right, so this is epi, which means on. Hypo means under, so, or below. So epigastric region, hypogastric region, all right? Now I can go, let's, you know, now I have the top, the middle and the bottom rights and lefts. So remember, it's opposite to you. This is my left, but it's the person's right. Both of these are hypochondriac regions. So a way you can remember this, if you're a hypo hypochondriac, you're always like really um, tense and you're always like way up here, you know, you're always nervous. And so I, I remember that those are the high ones. They are the ones that are above. Okay, so if I have these regions, oh, I have hypochondriac, lumbar, and I have inguinal. All right, those are, you know, those are up higher. Chondro refers to cartilage and your ribs, there's cartilage there. And this is where your ribs are. So it's kind of like under the ribs a little bit. And so that's also helpful to me. But you might want to just go with always, you know, uptight, nervous, hypochondriac. Um, that's, those are the ones that are up higher. The lumbar, your lowest, your low back is the lumbar vertebrae. So that's why those are the right and the left. And then the right inguinal and left inguinal. Okay, the inguinal, you kind of have to know that's the groin. Okay, so before I'm looking at the areas of the body. So if you know that's the groin, that makes sense where the groin is. All right, so this is really important for doctors because they can say, oh, the damage is to the right hypochondriac region or the inguinal region, all right? So this, this allows doctors to identify what region and what organs could be damaged, you know, what organs are located in the different areas, all right? So you got the blue line that is just the quadrants, all right? And then you have, you know, the tic-tac-toe that tell the specific regions. So you can see the spleen here. This would be the right hypochondriac region. So take a little bit of time, kind of look at where your, you know, kids are always like, oh, I got a pain here, I got a pain there. You know, you can look like what side is it on, you know, the appendix is right here. So you can see that that's more on your right side than the left. Okay, so we're going to look at the lateral view here. And the lateral view here, uh, there are some directional terms and they come in pairs often. All right, so if I start here and if I turned, you know, this is going to be anterior, okay, which is also ventral, that's my belly side, all right, and then my back 
that's going to be posterior and my dorsal side. So you can see this is going to be anterior or ventral. This is going to be posterior or dorsal. So your anterior side is your front side, your belly side. Posterior is going to be your back side. That's going to be your dorsal side. Up at the top, we have cranial or cephalic. Remember, cephalic means the head. Okay, your cranium. Okay, your uh, skull. You can think of the cranium. So that's cranial, cephalic, and then down here is caudal. So like in a fish, um, a lot of times they say the caudal fin, all right, it's at the end of the fish. We might say in an animal, um, we might say, you know, like we dissect pigs or minks, you know, they're on all fours. And so often we use cranial for where the head is and caudal for where the tail is. Other directional terms we might refer to when we get in the muscles are superficial. All right, so that is near or right at the body surface. And then deep is going to be towards the inner uh, interior of the body. So we would say things like the bone of the thigh, okay, is deep to the surrounding muscles because the bone is deeper in there. The skin is superficial to any of the muscles that are in there, or it's superficial to where the bone is. All right, let's take a look at the anterior view here. All right, and so notice, I was trying to kind of show you this before, but she's in anatomical position. And that's what I mean with standing with your arms at your side, but your palms up. So that is anatomical position. If we were in class, I'd say everybody stand up, get in anatomical position. All right, so there are some terms. We'll start right here with medial and lateral. Medial is towards the midline, okay? So going towards the midline of the body here. All right, so this would be medial. And then going away would be lateral. Proximal and distal. And it even says it on here. Proximal is towards the point of attachment of a limb to the trunk. All right. It says the shoulders proximal to the wrist. All right. So you have, you know, your shoulder here. This is your humerus. The humeral head, that part that goes into my shoulder joint, is going to be proximal to the wrist, okay? It is towards the point of attachment that is attaching to my trunk, okay? My wrist is distal to the shoulder, okay? So here in the diagram, it says away from the point of attachment to the limb to the trunk, all right? So my wrist, if I went wrist, and I'm trying to be in an anatomical position here, if I went my wrist, the, um, the fingers are distal to my wrist. They're farther, right? They're distal to the wrist. All right, so we're going to practice some of these so you can get these down. But one thing you should think about is proximal it means it's like it's closer to the attachment at the trunk. So this is my trunk. So my, the head of my humerus is proximal to the trunk compared to the wrist, which is distal. All right, and that is it.